Some cops like to abuse their authority and bend the rules, but what happens when they take it too far? When they cross the line and commit crime, here are different cases where dirty and evil cops finally got caught. Get over here. You're gonna get shot! Shoot me! You ain't got no warrants! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is Melissa Perez, a citizen of San Antonio, Texas. On the 23rd of June, officers were dispatched to block 6,200 of Old Pearsall Road, San Antonio, in response to a disturbance involving a woman who was destroying property at the apartment complex. Once on the scene, officers tried to identify the woman, but she quickly got away from them back into the safety of her home. As we'll soon see, the encounter quickly escalated as officers decided to aggressively pursue Melissa Perez. Hey, lady, get over here. Get over here. The officers refuse to back off and wait when Melissa enters her home and instead quickly jump over the patio railing and begin to threaten her with a gun. The crucial moments following this one will be presented from different angles to create a clearer picture of what ensued. Although Melissa armed herself with a hammer, she was inside her apartment far from the officers who were outside it. Watching the same set of events from different body cams allows us to see just how much space the officers had between the window and the perceived threat that was inside the house. This cold-blooded atrocity against a mentally ill woman was committed by Officer Eleazar Alejandro and Sergeant Alfred Flores, both of whom have been charged with murder. A third officer, Nathaniel Villalobos, who was also involved in the shooting, was indicted for aggravated assault. Can't make up that I assaulted you. I just didn't agree with the truth. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I just left. Like, I don't understand. This is Ronald K. Davis, a 37-year-old Pennsylvania state police trooper who for personal grudges forcibly arrested his ex-girlfriend and committed her to a mental health facility under false allegations. The actions of Ronald K. Davis obstructed fundamental human rights and the very purpose of law enforcement. Let's dive deep into the case and find out what happened next. What the, what is wrong with you? Normal. I don't care what anybody says. Can I please stand up? Okay. I'm not going to any jail. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going anywhere. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What is wrong with you? Would you do this? <laughs> Would you? I thought. Go. You 
just called the cops on me. You're a cop. You're a f***ing. What the f*** is wrong with you? I've lived all over the world, and not one time has anyone ever come up, tackled me, attacked me, and called the cops on me for existing in the woods. Never. Ever. All because of the consequences of your actions, you don't like the truth. That's not... People like you shouldn't have any form of power. But if you want to sit on me, and you call the cops on me for what? Ronald used his power as a cop to falsely accuse his ex-girlfriend and forcibly admit her to a mental health asylum. Even though 37-year-old Ronald has a wife and kids, he got into an intimate relationship with Miss Perfanov. And now, when they are no longer together, he is trying to ruin her life using his position in law enforcement. For what? Oh, because I'm around a sociopath who says he can do whatever he wants. Women are objects of whatever he wants. I'd be happy to tell them that. Miss Perfanov didn't want him to touch her, didn't want him to see her, and it was completely against her will to be sent to a mental health facility, but Ronald didn't care. He forgot his duties and oath to protect people as a police officer. At one point, Ronald made it extremely difficult for Miss Perfanov to breathe and didn't loosen his grip even when it was clear that she was in terrible pain. This goes to show just how unhinged Ronald's behavior had become. Christ. Here we go. 
I could have happy called them. I don't even lie either. I didn't agree with the truth. <laughs> Ronald's misuse of his power became his nightmare. The Pennsylvania Police Department suspended him without pay, and Ronald got what he deserved when he was arrested on September 21st, 2023, on charges of felony, strangulation, unlawful restraint, false imprisonment, simple assault, recklessly endangering another person, and official oppression, and was remanded to jail without bail. You, you scared me a little bit because you were sleeping in there, so that's you know, why I was making sure you're okay. Hey, the taser! Hey, the taser! This is Rayshard Brooks, age 27, a caring father and a dancer known for his enthusiasm. On the 12th of June, 2020, Atlanta police officers were dispatched to a Wendy's parking lot where a car was blocking the drive through line. Officer Devin Brosnan arrived on the scene to find a haphazardly parked vehicle in the middle of the drive through line. He went up to the vehicle to find Mr. Rayshard Brooks asleep behind the wheel. Here's what happened next. Come in. Hey. Come in. Hey. Hey, man, you're parked in the middle of the drive through line here. Hey. Sir. What's up, man? Hey, you're parked in the, in the drive through right now. Sir, you right? So you're, you're, park, you're, you're sitting in the drive through line here. What's up? So you're parked in the drive through line. You're, you're, you're blocking traffic here. You were sleeping when I walked up here. What's up, man? You used to have a long day or something? What's up? Yeah, you can't, you just, you're walking, people calling said you were walking here, all right? You good? You don't need a ambulance or anything like that? Are you just tired? All right, man, just, just I'll move my car. Just pull up, just pull somewhere and take it out. All right. All right, you good? <laughs> yeah. All right. At first, Officer Brosnan believes that Mr. Brooks has just had a long day and is simply tired. So he asks him to move his car into the parking lot where he won't be blocking the line. However, Mr. Brooks falls asleep behind the wheel again, and Officer Brosnan has to wake him up and ask him to move again. At this point, Officer Brosnan suspects that Mr. Brooks might be drunk and calls in for a DUI certified officer. She told me and dropped me out. In, in what car? How did this car get here? I mean, it was here before I came. Like, this is my car. It's a rental car, my sister. But, I mean, like I told her, I, I, I came here, I met her here. Okay. From the beginning, and she picked me up. And, I mean, we went out. So we you met her here at the Wendy's? Yes. And then you went out with her? Yes. And, and then she, she came, came and dropped back you off? here. Okay. And, you know, I mean, like I told her, I'm going to say, hey, babe. You know, I, I just want a burger or I want fries. He said, hey, no problem. I'll take you there. All right. You get your fries and you come back to the hotel. Okay. No so problem. the reason why we're here is because somebody called 911 because you were asleep behind the wheel while you were in the drive through right? You recall that? I don't. I don't. You don't recall that? You don't no. recall just minutes ago where you were passed out behind the wheel in the drive through Uh-uh. You don't recall that at all? I Absolutely, just complete, I just complete blur. I, I wasn't driving. Like I said, I, I just drank my 
my uh, girlfriend, she probably was uh, sleeping, but like I said, I said, babe, I want French fries. So far as I'm aware, you're the only per person that's been seen in this vehicle, right? Yeah, only person. And you've been in the driver's seat the whole time. So how did the car get into the drive-thru line? With you behind the wheel. She drove here. I said, babe, I'm drinking. You know, in a black car. In a black car. And you got into your car. I said, hey, you know what? No problem. I'll just meet you at the hotel. And she said, hey, get out. Hold on, hold on. So after she drops you off here in her black car, your car was parked where? Here. Okay. So how did your car get from here to the, the drive through line? I, I never moved. So how did it get there? It, it never did get there. I, I told you I was in her car. Well, we've got a 911 call of people reporting a guy passed out behind the wheel in the line. This officer gets here and sees you. Everything's on camera. Sees you See in the line. Here in the line. In the well, line. I, was, I wasn't in the line. Did I pull you over in the line? I you walked did. up. You had to wake up, man. You didn't in pull the, him right over. here. No, it was here. I had to wake you up. They went back to sleep and I had to wake up again. Like I said, I, I'm I'm sorry if I y'all I, I just got something to eat. I went to visit my mother's grave site. I'm not causing any problems. Well, we gotta make sure that you're safe to operate a vehicle. Now, do you know where you are? Yeah, absolutely. Where are you? Far as part, Old Dixie Highway. Old Dixie Highway in Florida. The whole lodge is there. Right, right here. Subway. Right. A subway. Okay. So it's a subway right here. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Like I said, I could, I could. So you, you think that you're in Forest Park right now? I'm on Old Dixie Highway, Clayton County. Right. No, you're not. Well, Forest Park, Georgia. It's become quite clear that Mr. Brooks has had a little too much to drink and isn't fit to drive. Officer Garrett Rolfe, the DUI certified officer, now attempts to get Mr. Brooks to admit to it. Like I said, Do you think maybe that you had too much to drink and you realized that you shouldn't drive, so you park? I mean... Would that be accurate to say? Yes, sir. Mr. Rolfe, yes. All right, so your girlfriend dropped you off, you got into the car, I you backed out, you come up, her. and you're like, damn, I'm too drunk to drive. And so you pull back into the parking spot. Park, right? I call her like, babe. Oh, is that accurate? If, 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 if it, it's a couple moments, I got on the phone with her. Yeah. I'm like, babe, hey, damn, you know, um, you want number one or number two or... But She's like, would you Would you agree? You uh, you take care of that. You're a man. You figure out what we're going to eat tonight. All right. All right. Let's move past that. Would you agree that you've had too much to drink to drive? I mean, I can focus, Mr. Ross. I can focus. Would you agree that you've had too much to drink to drive? I, I haven't had, you know, to the point where I can't focus. Okay. I was a little tired ahead of the day because we just came from North Carolina. You think that you're safe to operate a vehicle right Absolutely, now? Mr. Roth. And how much have you had to drink? I had two, uh, one and a half margaritas, Mr. Roth. One and a half margaritas? Yes, sir. Margaritas? Yes. Have you had anything else today? Any other type of drink? No, sir. You haven't had any daiquiris? I haven't had no daiquiri. I had one and a half little small cups of margarita, but margarita. I can. I'm up now. Y'all got me up with this. I'm up now. I if I, if hey, will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Uh, what's, what's that? It's a little handheld machine. I have you blow into it. That lets me know if you're uh, positive or negative for the presence of alcohol in your breath. I've, I've been drinking. Okay. I, I, I do um, say that. Okay. But I'm only going a few minutes down the road. I got you. I'm just asking, will you take a preliminary breath test for me? I mean, I, I don't know what it is. I just said it's a little handheld machine. Let me know if it's positive or, or negative for the presence of alcohol. It's part of my investigation. You know it is the presence. I've I know. Been drinking. I know. I can tell. That's just part of my investigation. But it's like just, I said, listen, I, listen, I, listen. if I have to park this car right here right now, well, it's, well, it's just a yes or no. I don't, we don't need to go back and forth about it. It's just a yes or no. But what if I what if I take this test and. I I don't care about. I can walk home. Why I don't would have you? to. I don't have to park. Why would, why would you walk home? I just don't want to be in violation of anybody. I can walk. My my sister's house is right here. Do you think that you'd be in violation of something if you if, if you were to drive your vehicle? If if you know if that's less possible for me to park here, lock the car up, and do everything that I need to do within the presence of you guys. 
go home. I have my daughters there right now. My three, my daughter's birthday was yesterday. All right. Hold on, Miss Brooks. Will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Is it yes or no? I don't want to refuse anything. Uh, it's yes or no. It's completely up to you. Yes, I will. Okay. Just wait here while I grab. Make sure, man, you're staying to dry, that's all. I know, man. I just... You, you scared me a little bit because you were sleeping in there, so that's, you know, why I was making sure you're okay. You know, and then that's... I know, I know. You just doing your draw. All right, just take a deep breath in. Put your mouth over the mouthpiece. Blow as hard as you can until I tell you to stop. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. Very good. I just uh, had a, a few drinks. That's it. How many? One and a half. Like I said... I was into the second cup. I wasn't even, I told her, babe, let's go. Because I'm hungry, I what, need What kind eat. of drinks did you have? Uh, I'm not sure, it's something she ordered. She said top shelf or whatever. Top shelf what? I'm not sure, it was, like I said, it was her birthday and it was my daughter's birthday intent to, you know, have a good time. And I said, babe, you know, I'm hungry, let's go. My, my, my baby's mom, she was there, I said, babe, Go ahead. I'm cool. You know, here's the money for the blow up bed tomorrow. Here's the money for, you know, to enjoy herself tomorrow. Just, you want to give me a burger or or something? To right. Just take me home. I'm ready to go. So you had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't, Mr. All right. I think you've had too much to drink to be dry. Put your hands on your back, boy. Put your hands on your back. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're gonna get tased. You're gonna get tased. Stop. Mr. Stop. 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 You're gonna get tased. Mr. Rock. Hands off the taser. Hands off the taser. Stop fighting. 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 Hands off the taser. Officer Garrett Rolfe spent nearly 25 minutes talking to Rayshard Brooks and knew exactly what was going on. He knew that Mr. Brooks meant no harm, that Mr. Brooks was a little drunk because he had just enjoyed an evening with his girlfriend on her birthday, and yet Officer Garrett decided that Rayshard Brooks needed to be gunned down as he panicked and tried to flee over a DUI. Unfortunately, that's not all, Officer Garrett exclaimed. I got him after shooting down Mr. Brooks and went on to kick his wounded body on the ground. The officers failed to render aid to Mr. Brooks for more than two minutes, and soon after, Mr. Brooks succumbed to his injury. As a result of this horrifying encounter, Officer Garrett Rolfe was charged with murder while Officer Devin Brosnan was charged with aggravated assault. 65A suspicious vehicle at the BP station, 3rd Nicollet. It's an unlicensed uh, vehicle, sir. Hey, I need your license hey. and proof of insurance. Your temp tag is expired. Can I be any more clear to you? I got the registrations right there. That's what I was trying to tell you. This is Ty Ramon Jindra, age 29, a former police officer with the Minneapolis Police Department. Ty Jindra abused his position to get controlled narcotics. On July 5th, 2019, Ty Jindra was at a gas station in South Minneapolis. This is where he saw an opportunity that would allow him to conduct an illegal search of the vehicle. Here's how it all went down. You gotta have that temp tag down, man. Huh? Temp tag needs to be down lower. Uh, is up, uh, 625. Why don't you sit in the car? What'd I do? 625. Sit in the car. Please. Get in the car. That's a that's expired, is it not? Well, what did Sit I do? Sit in your car. Sit in your car. Sit in the car. All right, I'll take, three, I'll take your license three, and your proof of insurance. Three. What did I do? 65A suspicious vehicle. You're, you stand over there. At the BP station, 3rd Nicollet. It's an unlicensed uh, vehicle, sir. 
I need your license I mean, and proof of insurance. Your temp tag is expired. Can I be any more clear to you? I got the registrations right there. That's what I was trying to tell you. You need to have license plates on your car. Give me your license and your proof of insurance or you're going in handcuffs. God damn. Yeah, I'm at uh, third Franklin. All right, step out of the car. Harry. Throne, translate back. In five off, five off, there's a saxophone. Harry. Why are you driving without the license, man? Huh? That's kind of stupid, isn't it? Should we clear to our field that I'm going to go home? Harry. Huh? Let's go. You got anything illegal in the car? It's pretty feet. Right from the get-go, Ty Jindra was aggressive and even threatened to put Ramon in handcuffs as he complied with his demands. Jindra was supposed to follow legal procedure by letting him show him all the documents and speak for himself, yet he was biased and instantly arrested him, violating his laws. What's your buddy got in your car? What, what, is, what is this? Huh? What, what does that look like to you? You don't know? No idea, huh? What would you guess it'd be? I have no idea. Do you have no, no idea? Alright, I'll just tell you the fucking car. That's not mine. Put your license plates on. 
That's what I was going to. I just got it today from my brother. I was just using the car. Right. And I'm, that's why I was trying to explain to you that the places in the registrations is all right there in the window. All right. Can I show you? I'm going to give you a, I'm gonna give you a break. You have the license. You all right? Yes, but because I was just using my brother's car. Can all I show right. you the plates? Go ahead. I, I'll show you. Don't put them on until... June 2nd. He, he said, don't put them on until... Well, it's July. Oh, well, yeah, I know. But he been having a car since. All right. Well, hold on. Should have a yellow tag. Huh? And he just no, I just pulled off because oh. it was expired a month ago. That's what I'm saying. It's my brother car. I didn't... All right. 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 Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Officer Ty Jindra arrested Ramon Brown based on the color of his skin. He violated Ramon Brown's civil rights laws. He also illegally searched Ramon's car without a warrant. Later on November 2nd, 2021, after a 10-day trial, Jindra was found guilty on three counts of getting a controlled drug by fraud and two charges of deprivation of rights under color of law. Jindra was sentenced by senior United States District Judge Donovan W. Frank to 38 months in prison. This is Daunte Wright, a 20-year-old young black man. On the 11th of April, 2021, Daunte Wright was stopped by Brooklyn Center Police for a minor traffic violation. He had an expired registration tab and an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror, which was illegal in Minnesota. As the traffic stop proceeded, the officers discovered that Daunte Wright had an outstanding warrant for a gross misdemeanor weapons charge. The warrant was for carrying a handgun in public without a state permit. The officers asked Daunte Wright to step out of the vehicle to which he complied. Here's what happened next. You can tell you're under arrest, don't you? The last clip shows Daunte Wright's mother, Katie Bryant, arriving on the scene. Katie knew that her son had been shot because his girlfriend was with him at the time and had Facebooked her, which let her have at least some account of what happened as officers on the scene were of no help. No, please. Please, please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, somebody to talk to. I'm going to get you someone to talk to. Okay? But I, I just can't have you going over there right now. Okay? Ma'am, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. What, what, is your, what is your name? Can I have you sit on the, on the light show? You guys shot him. Why? I don't know. I wasn't here. Why? Because he had a warrant. Are you serious? I was here. I watched him. Can you just sit down? Tell me what's wrong. Because I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Where's the girl that was in the car with him? You guys made her hang up Facebook Live so you can kill my son. That's pretty pathetic. What is your What is your name? My name is Katie Bryant. My son's name is Dante Wright. You guys already know that. I don't. I don't. Kate, Katie Bryant. It was a high speed chase. Brian, how? 
And then what's your son's okay. name? Okay. Dante Wright. It was not a high speed chase. You guys shot him in a pullover traffic. Oh, I, I didn't you guys, know Yeah, you did. He was laying in his front seat dead. His girlfriend Facebooked me. How did his car get smashed? What's his name again? Dante Wright. Wright? Is it, is it W R I G H T? W R I G H T. Is it a Katie? Yeah. Brian. Yeah. All right. Just wait a second here, ma'am. Wait, wait. Ma'am. You can just sit down, please. Ma'am. Okay, so I wasn't here. You said there was a traffic stop and they shot him. They pulled him over and he was. He said, Mom, do I have a warrant? I said, I don't know. They asked him to get out of the car. He got out of the car and they said, Wait, stop, stop. They said, Stop. And then she goes, And then they shot him and he fell back in the seat. And she was laying in the driver's seat. And she said, They shot him. And I said, What do you mean they shot him? She said, Yeah. And then they told her to hang up. And that was it. I don't know nothing else. So I had to call you guys to find out where this happened. I really don't know more because I just came because I heard there was trouble. Why is this? Why is my car smashed up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The step in here wasn't. We weren't here. Oh my God. I'm uh, I'm I'm I'm. Uh, Are you alive? I do not know the condition. I don't Are know. Are you guys serious? What are you talking to me for then? We're going to find out. We're going to find out, but we have to wait and find out who's involved and who's in charge and get you in contact with the people that know what's going on. So I can tell them who I'm talking to. Dante Wright succumbed to the gunshot wound in his chest shortly after the encounter, and Officer Kim Porter resigned two days later. In the trial that ensued, it was argued that Kim Porter not only should have known the difference between her taser and her gun, but shouldn't have been reaching for her taser at all, since it was against department policy to tase a fleeing suspect. At the end of it all, Kim Porter was charged with first and second degree manslaughter. When I saw the barrel of that gun pointed at me, and I fired a single shot, from my duty weapon. Uh, when my vision cleared, then I observed the person that we now know as Miss Jefferson. I heard her scream and, and saw her fall like this. And I, I knew that, that I'd shot that person. This is Aaron Dean, age 28, a former Fort Worth police officer. On October 2019, Aaron Dean fatally shot a black woman, Atatiana Jefferson, through the window of her home. Atatiana Jefferson had been playing video games at home with her eight-year-old nephew. Aaron Dean was responding to Jefferson's home after a neighbor contacted a non-emergency number at about 2 a.m. to report an open front door. Part of your training in tactics that are taught by the city of Fort Worth, is when you're going into an opening with two officers, two or more, is there a crossover technique that's taught at the academy? Yes. Can you explain that to the members of the jury? The person standing on the left side of the opening goes to the right on the inside, and the person standing to the right of the opening goes to the left on the inside. Because of your position at the gate, you're going left, Arch is going right? Yes. Had you completed your investigation before you opened that gate? No, we have not. When you open the gate, take the members of the jury forward from there. So I opened that gate with my handheld flashlight, took a quick look to the left, and observed the back of the house with a window and an air conditioning unit to the side. Uh, the window was pretty much right up against the, the fence. Um, quick look to the right just to make sure there was nobody standing there and then moved on into the left. Could you sense or feel that your partner, Carol Darch, was coming in and, and covering your, your backside? Yes. Aaron, when you looked into the window, did anything catch your eye? Yes. Can you explain that to the jury? As I looked through that window, low in the window, I observed a person. Couldn't tell black, white, male, female. I saw uh, the torso horizontal, bent over horizontal and could see about this much up on the arm and then about the same uh, on the leg, just the upper, upper leg to the hip. And uh, the upper arms, I could tell there was movement, like the upper arms were moving, like someone was reaching for something or grasping. And this torso, this silhouette, 
Is it okay to use silhouette? Silhouette, yes. Were they near the window or away from the window based on what you could see at the time? Uh, very close to the window. You've seen your video? Yes. Are you able to see into the room where the camera cannot? Yes. When you see this silhouette of the torso, would you say it is an adult torso or an adult torso? It was an adult torso. Aaron, when you see that adult torso at the window, what do you do? Well, I thought we had a, had a burger, so I uh, stepped back, straightened up, and drew my uh, weapon and then pointed it uh, towards the figure. I couldn't see that person's hands, and we're taught that uh, the hands, and it's what's in them that kill. We need, to, we need to see the hands. We need to get people to show us our hands and get control of those hands. So I uh, drew my weapon, intending to tell that person to show me their hands. A police officer's duty demands him to follow lawful protocols while inquiring about any complaint, but Aaron neglected these procedures and ended up taking an innocent life. I think you told the jury you've taken a step back. You've unholstered your weapon. What are you doing at this point? Well, as I said, I needed to see that person's hands because the hands carry weapons. The hands are the threat to us. So I looked back uh, after I got my light on, saw the silhouette again, and I was shouting at this time, shouting commands, uh, put up your hands, show me your hands, show me your hands. And as I started to get that second phrase out, show me your hands, I saw the silhouette. I was looking right down the barrel of the gun. And when I saw the barrel of that gun pointed at me, and I fired a single shot from my duty weapon, and immediately had the the flash from the muzzle reflecting off the off the window, and of course, uh, as my weapon recoiled, the light was bouncing back in my face, so I couldn't see. Uh, when my vision cleared, then I observed the person that we now know as Miss Jefferson. I heard her scream and, and saw her fall like this. And I, I knew that, that I'd shot that person. Aaron, when you first picked up this firearm pointed at you, how close to the window were you? Picked up, you mean saw? Yes, sir. Visually picked up. Very close. Um, not any more than arm's length. This may be an obvious question, but I need to ask you. You, you. you see the weapon. Is it in the silhouette's hand? What do you see? I just saw the silhouette of the person in the gun. I don't recall seeing hands, but I, I did see that weapon pointed at me. You're not saying the gun's on the floor? No, the gun was pointed directly at me. And about how high up on the silhouette was the gun in your mind when you're looking at this? Maybe mid-chest? I'm, I'm not sure. Miss Jefferson became a victim of Aaron's carelessness and incompetence as a police officer. She didn't deserve to die, especially not in her own home, which should have been the safest place for her to be. The psychologist in the case expressed that Dean was not psychologically suitable to serve as a police officer and had a narcissistic personality style that would put him and others at risk. Did you make any observations about yourself at that point? Did you hear what's going on around you? I could hear people on the radio in my ear, but thats I don't remember hearing anything else. You and Aaron, you and Carol have to still clear that house because you don't know what you have, correct? Yes. Is your investigation completed at that point? No, it's not. What do you do next, Aaron? Well, at the gate we... Um, I asked her if she had one of the tech med bags. Uh, she said she didn't, so I started making plans to find objects in the room to start rendering emergency aid until 
MedStar got there. And at that point, the radio is just blowing up, and they're asking me questions, and people are saying they're coming, and I'm trying to respond, and we hit the, we get to the door, um, and dispatch asked me some other question. I started to try to respond, and I was like, forget it. We got to go. We got to get inside this house and see what else is going on there and, and render aid to this person. Uh, so we get inside, and I let the radio go. And, uh, and we start shouting commands and fast clearing, which is just looking just as fast as we can, but safely moving through and, and observing into each of the rooms and the halls and everything just to see if there's somebody there. And we got to that back bedroom. Um, and it, as, as we moved through the house, all of the, the rooms, they were all a mess. Every, everything was a mess in the house, just objects everywhere, objects all over the floor, all over the furniture. It was just, it looked trash. It looked like somebody had just gone through everything. And I get to that back bedroom and off to my right, I see a kid. And of course, it's, you know, we know it's Zion. And I'm thinking, who brings a kid to a burglary? What is going on? I see a dog. And at that point, I was just like, never mind. Forget what else. Go you got Darcy. Just shut up and work. Shut up and work. Get, get the weapon. Render aid to her. Get the weapon. Render aid to the person. And I remember... Uh, going over to the person laying on the floor uh, and uh, saw the weapon uh, between her feet and I remember putting my putting my gloves on and then uh, picking up the weapon and at this point I could hear Officer Dart saying something to, to Zion of course you know we now know from the video he says he just says I don't want to go to jail she tells him, don't worry, you're not going to jail. Of course, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself, Judge. I, I didn't actually hear all that at the time. Just processing everything. And there was talk last week when Carol was here testifying that she had an attorney named Terry Daffron. You, you know Terry? Yes. And as part of your training at the academy, Ms. Daffron came in and lectured you all. Yes. Part of the faculty that came and taught you. Yes. And she gave recommendations for how to handle and not handle evidence in a scene, correct? Correct. She told you not to touch anything. Correct. Your instructors are the final word, though, on your training, correct? They are. In your survival week training, did you uh, get yelled at for not removing the weapon from a suspect that was down? I did. That have a lasting impression on you of what you're supposed to do for officer safety? Yes, it did. What are you trained to do to uh, get weapons away from anyone? Just to move that weapon away from the person, from any person. Prior to doing anything else? Prior to doing anything else. Locate this weapon. Is it a firearm? Yes. You located it near Ms. Jefferson's feet. Yes. And I believe you, what did you do with it at that point? I picked it up just to move it away from her. And as I picked it up, I saw a green laser tracing across the white wall. And is that your concern at that point, though? No, I'm just, I'm just getting it away from that person. You know from what's blowing up in your ear, because we can't hear the radio traffic as it sits on your body-worn camera, that the cavalry is coming behind you. Yes. What precautions, how are you trained to render first aid? You're not a paramedic, correct? Correct. Are you a basic EMT? No. What sort of first aid have you had in the academy? Um, CPR and then um, bleed stoppage on, on bullet wounds and knife wounds. Former officer Aaron Dean's actions led to criticism focused not only towards him, but also towards the police department he represented. He resigned from his job 
and later on was charged with manslaughter. The Tarrant County jury convicted him of manslaughter, and he was sentenced to 11 years and 10 months in prison by Judge George Gallagher. Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Look at this! Doesn't matter! Hands up! Look at this! Hands up! I'm not a... Come up here and pull the door up. Come up here and pull the door open. Hands up! This is John Fover, a suicidal man in the middle of a mental health crisis. John had just left after an argument with his wife, who was concerned that he might harm himself, and so called the police to get their help. On the 23rd of April 2022, deputies from Harford County arrived at a shopping center on Rock Spring Road, where they found Fover in his pickup. Here's how the encounter unfolded. Come up here and pull the door open. Hands up! Yeah. Drive it away, drive it away! Shots fired, shots fired! He just tried to run me over! Get somebody on Spence, you're on 24 now! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! in the back, he's saying, get your snipers, boys. Get cover, guys, back up. Signal 13, shut down 24 at Spenciola, just north of the shopping center. Give me somebody to sneak around, it's Kimry Court, get back rear coverage for us. Six, seven, back up and shut that road down. There's cars coming. He's still mobile in the vehicle. He's still mobile in the vehicle. We can't pin it. Hands up! Don't do it, John. Just show us your hands. Show us your hands. It's not worth it, John. It's not worth it, John. Hands up. Hands up. John, hands up. Don't make this stupid. Hands up. He's saying he's reaching for a gun, guys. Hands up. Hands up. Shut down Spenciola. Shut down Spenciola. Hands up, John. Shut it down completely, 167. Back the f up. Shut down. Drive over the grass. Whatever. Shut it down. No cars behind him. Hands up, John. Okay, final units, go around the back of chopsticks, form an arrest team if we need to. John, hands up! End this, John! Just come to us! You good? At this point, John has moved to a nearby parking lot in his pickup where the officers have him surrounded with their guns drawn. Hey, we got any SRT with like a pepper ball or something? Anybody SRT on the team here that has long distance less lethal or pepper ball? Yeah, Diesel, when you get here, come around uh, from the light by uh, CVS. He's back in the vehicle. He's reaching in the vehicle again. <clears throat> it's a cane. It's a cane. It's a cane. Come out here with your hands up! Yes, he has guns in the car, guys. We don't know if they're locked up or what. He's reaching under the seat. 
Nope, just be ready, guys. Come out with your hands up only. Stop reaching, we're here to help you, God damn it, come on. He's back out with the phone at least. What, he's getting a drink. Go past Spenciola, make a left at the CVS into the Chopsticks parking lot, come up behind us. Suspects at the 1-2 AB corner of Chopsticks in the Chopsticks parking lot. We uh, are facing towards Kimmery Court with all of our long guns. <clears throat> Keep talking to him. Daily, keep talking to him. You know him. Other officers, such as Corporal Christopher Maddox, mistook the cane for a gun or a rifle and shouted, He's got a gun! which led to officers opening fire on John. All responding units come from southbound 24 into the light by the CVS. Come that way. Sixty-seven. Back up further. Block all that sh off now. He's reaching in the car again. Shut that road down completely. Nobody in or out. He's he's saying goodbye to his old lady. Keep trying, Daly. should come in the CVS side of the shopping center. We are at the AB12 corner of Chopsticks in the Chopsticks parking lot. All shots are faced towards Kimmery Court and Spenciola Parkway. Yo! I don't know. Is the armored vehicle headed this way, dispatch? Start it. Start SRT at this point. Go past every exit of Spenciola. Go in the CVS. He's reaching down in. It's it. It's a cane. It's a cane. It's a cane. It's a cane. Cease fire. Cease fire. Cease fire. No, no, Rocker, stay back. Rocker, stay back. Stay back. Stay back. Check crossfire. Check crossfire, guys. Stop. John was severely wounded and later pronounced dead at the hospital. John Fover's family was appalled by the events that led to his demise and argued that the officers greatly mishandled the situation, a situation where a man amidst a mental health crisis needed their help. Unfortunately for them, the state's attorney announced that they would not pursue charges for the deputies and categorized John Fover's death as a suicide by law enforcement. Yeah, I'm not going to chase him on foot. I'll, I don't need to chase him. My car will chase him. These two lawmen are Kenneth L. Moore and John McCaffrey, former Willis Police Department officers. On the 29th of July, 2017, three officers, including Officer Elmore and Officer McCaffrey, responded to a home where Kendrick Kizzy was involved in a family argument. The officers asked Kizzy to leave twice, which they were not legally allowed to do since Kizzy lived there. Kizzy did decide to leave, but continued arguing with the officers who try to scare him before Kizzy flees the area. Let's see how the officers react. Yeah, 
I'm not going to chase him on foot. I'll, uh, I don't need to chase him. My car will chase him, though. Go pick him up. He's me off now. The officers had no need to follow Kizzy, but decided to do so anyway. These arrogant officers decided to tease Kizzy and allowed him to run as they made fun of him before chasing him in their car to do what they called a drive-by tasing. It's horrifying to see police officers planning to use force in advance when it clearly isn't necessary. Get him! Get him! Get him! Put hands on him! You know, what are you gonna say, huh? Who caught who? Huh? Whose is are in your back? Who caught who? Again. Run your mouth. Okay, let go. You know what, man? Run your mouth like that. As in, we're trying to give you opportunity to just walk somewhere, man. I got food off. They room, bro. And it looks bad that you're out there yelling at us, calling me. The officers brutally tase Kinsey from within their patrol cars before illegally arresting him, as can be seen in the clip. In May 2018, Elmore and McCaffrey were dismissed from the Willis Police Department and relinquished their Texas law enforcement licenses. After a week-long trial, a jury convicted the duo of tampering with a government document, concluding they faked an arrest report, and 220 First State District Judge Lisa McCulk sentenced them to a year in the Montgomery County Jail. The former cops were allowed one week to get their affairs in order before going to jail to start their sentences. Although seeing these dirty police officers getting sentenced to prison makes you believe in the justice system, there are still many instances where officers were not properly prosecuted. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye!